Hello guys, I'm Sriman. In this video, I'm going to use a mind map to cover the concepts behind the topic of kinematics. No, 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 I'm not going to bore you with boring formulas that you have already studied in your school notes. I'm going to be very simple. I'm going to explain the concepts that are behind the formulas so that you can apply these concepts to all the other topics in the physics syllabus so that you will do well for exams, okay? The entire mind map is found in the description. So please click on it, download it, share it with your friends, and let's jump right in to the first strategy. Number one, guys, is to define the positive direction. A lot of people don't define the positive direction. The reason why you should do that is because vectors not only have magnitude, they also have I addressed it in a previous video as well on measurement, the idea of direction, correct? So kinematics is filled with vectors. There's displacement, there's acceleration A, there's velocity. When you ignore the idea of direction, you will screw up during exams. So how is direction subdivided? Direction has two things, okay? So number one is up and down. So you say, Take motion upwards as positive. Take motion downwards as positive. Okay, so all the vectors will have a positive value in their respective direction. Other than that, it could also be left and right, or left or right. So you say which one is the positive direction. Example, an object moves in the left to right direction. You say this direction is positive, then intuitively this is negative. Now this is applicable to both MCQ and structure questions as well because it consists of two types of motion, linear as well as non-linear, okay? What is linear motion? Linear motion is the one in the syllabus. For example, you play catching in your school, okay? You run in a straight line and some other person chases you. That is linear motion, running man or catching or an object moves along a straight line or along a slope. That is linear motion, okay? Which is in the syllabus. Whereas non-linear motion is subdivided into two things. One is circular motion, which is actually a chapter in physics. And the number two is trajectory or parabola, which is something you study in kinematics. But basically you have a ball, you throw it in this direction and it goes, follows this path, correct? This thing is in syllabus. Circular motion, the kinematics formulas are not in the syllabus. So for those of you guys interested in the ideas of moment of inertia, angular momentum, angular torque, and these kind of things, it's not in the syllabus, it's just for your interest. Alright guys, we'll be doing an example question, just a very small part to highlight the important concept under this. Alright, here I have the question on the right side of the board. A stone is thrown vertically upward with a speed of 12 meters per second from the edge of a cliff 100 meters high. Okay, let's draw a visual diagram of what is happening. We have a cliff, okay, and that cliff is 100 meters high and we have a guy, some random dude, throwing a stone vertically upwards and it then it falls down all the way to the floor. Okay, it's released with a speed of 12 meters per second. Now first, what is this and this? An important strategy that you guys should practice from now on is to label as you go. What do I mean by that? Okay, speed of 12 meters per second. What is the relevant letter or variable that you have learned that represents this? V, right? So we can write this as V. Now, 100 meters high, so it's distance or displacement. So we will call it S. In this topic, we are dealing with vectors. So, what did I say? Define the positive direction. And generally, the positive direction is defined as the direction of acceleration. Very important point. So, in this case, it accelerates due to gravity. So, we we'll define the downward direction as positive. Alright? So what formula do you use? The question asks, calculate the speed just before it hits the ground, which is somewhere along here. Labeling has helped you. You have the V, you know that you have the S. So what is the formula that comes to your mind? V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS. Am I right? That's the formula that comes to your mind. See how labeling has helped you 
identify and immediately find the formula that is the good strategy. Now, d square is the one you need to find, guys. Now, we took downwards as positive. Now, this velocity is going upwards, right? So, do you put 12 or negative 12? Negative 12, guys. Okay? And then plus 2 AS. So, it's just plus 2 gravity and then displacement, which is just 100 meters. So, you just all you need to do is just input the values, get the negative or positive value, right? And the answer will just come out magically, which you can calculate for yourself. So, please define a positive direction and use the correct numbers. Alright, the question aside, the third important strategy after this too is related to graphs. Okay? A very important part of physics, not only in MCQ as well as structured questions. After watching this video, when you look at graphs, there are a couple of things that you guys should never forget. Okay? So number one is relationships or formulas. The moment you look at a graph, you're able to derive the formula. Let's look at a certain formula. S is equals to ut plus half at squared. Alright guys? Now, in a, an equation, you have learned in math, okay? I'm just reiterating it right now. You have constants and you have variables. Now, which are the constants? This is the constant. What else? Half a, the acceleration is constant. Know that the formulas only apply if acceleration is constant in a straight line. Remember that condition? Very important for kinematics. So this is a constant, this is a constant. So what are the variables? This is the variable, s and t, not t squared. So next time you see an s t graph in a question, you immediately recognize this formula and apply and put in the values and get the answer, all right? All right, guys, so besides relationship and formulas, what is the second thing that you guys should take note? The gradient of a graph extremely important the gradient of a graph okay the gradient of the graph is basically a derivative you guys study this in math right d something over dt so it's d something over d something this is the y-axis this is the x-axis so just replace it so it calculates the derivative let's look at some examples if you have an s t graph like this what does the gradient represent the velocity, correct, because V is S over T, correct, or DS over DT. So this represents the velocity. Now, another case, let's look at a velocity time graph. Velocity time graph. You have a velocity like that, okay? So the gradient represents the acceleration because acceleration is DV over DT, correct? So everything revolves around derivatives. The second thing you guys take note is the value of the gradient, the magnitude of the gradient. Is it steep or is it gentle? So steep could mean a higher value of something. In the case of a velocity time graph, a higher value of acceleration. What's number three, guys? Very important also, intercepts. All right, what are intercepts? It's basically, you've studied this in math again. Math and physics are so related, correct? So, intercepts are the points at which it crosses the x and y axis, the graph cuts it. So, for example, let's look at a velocity time graph. In MCQ question, they give you this graph, this complicated looking graph, for example. You see that it passes through the origin. What does that mean? You don't have to even look at a question stem. You look at it. It says equals to, it starts from rest. So your u, right? Your u in your formula is equals to zero. A very, very important part that will like, remove a lot of terms in the formulas, right? Then the last one, guys, is, think about it, the area under the curve. Area under graph. Area under graph has a big difference from the gradient. It's not a derivative. It is the multiplication. Or, in a more complex mathematical way, integration. So, if you have, for example, a graph of velocity 
against time. The area under the graph represents the displacement, correct? Because V is S over T. Now, similarly, if we look at an acceleration time graph in the topic of kinematics and look at a similar graph, the area under the graph represents the velocity. So the change in velocity, in this case, if it's above the graph, it's positive. If it's below the graph, it's negative, okay? So how does integration apply? So the integral of A dt is equal to V, as well as the plus C, but yeah, if it's defined in a certain time interval. Now, how does this relate to a formula that you learned before? V is equal to U plus AT. Am I right? So what is AT? What is this AT doing here? A times T, right? V is equal to A times T. AT is equal to V minus U, which is equal to del V, which is the one right here. Do you guys realize that? So in graphs, you need to know the relationships and formulas. When you look at a graph, the gradient, the intercept, as well as the area under the graph. All right? I don't know this guys, I just made small changes right here, if you did not take note. Now, let's come to the main part of the video, the formulas and the derivatives, and see how the, all these concepts apply, okay? So how did your notes derive all these four formulas? Let's look. You have a VT graph, okay? So it starts at a velocity U, and it ends at a velocity V over a time interval of t. Now let's recall the concept of graphs that we learned earlier. What does a vt graph represent? The gradient of the graph will represent the acceleration, correct? So this thing right here is the acceleration, the gradient of the graph. So if we apply this, you get a is equal to change in the rise over the run, correct? Which is v minus u over t. And this will give you V is equals to U plus AT. This is the number one formula that you guys have to know in the topic of kinematics. What next do you have? What does the area under the graph of a velocity time graph represent? Which is also a concept that I highlighted here. The multiplication. So, area under the graph is the displacement. So, the S is the area of this trapezium is what? Half u plus v and time period of t. Am I right? So that is your second formula, but this is the least used. Why? It requires three variables. So it's the least used formula. This is very common. Now how do you get the other two formulas? This is more mathematical. If you just sub this into this, 1 into 2, you will get the next formula, which is s is equal to u t plus half at squared. And this is a very important formula because it's a function of time for the graph of S. This is something I talk about. Relationships and formulas. Finding the variables, finding the constants. Now, how do you get the last formula? What is the last formula? V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS. What you do is just manipulate the first equation. So, V is equal to U plus AT. Correct, guys? You change this as a make t the main head of the equation. If you alter it, you'll become v minus u over a. You substitute this thing in this equation, you will get this equation. All right? Okay, guys, we have limited space, but a very important part of these four formulas, it only applies for motion in a straight line with constant acceleration. Right? So how do you define the line? Which line? Which direction would you want to call positive? Which direction would you want to call negative? So that's why the direction of acceleration is very important. Direction of acceleration represents the direction which we will call positive. So if you split this into two things, one can be downwards in the case of gravity, one can be a long slope. Okay, look at the previous video, I highlighted the formula of the component of a weight of an object 
Along along the slope as well as perpendicular to the slope. If you guys derive it, if you just use some trigonometry, we'll get g sine theta. This is the acceleration. This is not the force. This is the acceleration. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys want to have the complete mind map, the picture is in the description. Share this video with your friends who really need help for physics and want to do well. And most importantly, apply these strategies to all the other topics in physics. And I believe that you physics champions will do excellent for your A-level physics. Thanks for watching and subscribe.